Get at the noon. This is Dr. James C. Birdson Jr., founder, president, and executive director of Birdson Association of All Cast and Arts, known as BABA. And welcome to the 2022 first annual Mentors of Performing Arts and Broadcasters Virtual Conference. Today we are we are going to engage in the producers discussion. So at this time, I'm going to introduce our panel, our moderator, to introduce our distinguished panelists for this discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce NWCP Image Award nominated and Billboard charting producer, Mr. Sean Keyes, and he will introduce our panelists at this time. Thank you, Dr. Birdsong. Uh, welcome everybody to this uh, panel discussion. Glad to have everyone here. I want to introduce our panelists. We have Mr. Chris Adams of Charlotte, North Carolina. Chris Adams is a billboard chart topping multi award winning producer, programmer and pianist at John. I'm sorry, at Bon jo Joy uh, Music Group, LLC. And we also have Mr. Avery Johnson of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Avery Johnson is a Grammy Award nominated uh, platinum certified producer, engineer, and bassist whose credit includes uh, India Ari and E40. Welcome, fellas. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Uh, let's jump right into the questions, guys. Um, um, the first thing. Uh, that I want to ask you guys. Let me uh, locate my questions here. I'm sorry. Give me one moment. But it's a pleasure to have you guys on. Good to be here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm grateful. Grateful to be here. <laughs> absolutely. More than you know. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Okay, here we go. All right. So let me ask this question first. Can each of you explain to our youth about your beginnings as producers? Now, remember that each one of you have five minutes to answer this question. So we'll start with you first, Chris. Can each of you explain to our youth about your beginnings as producers? Sure thing. So my very beginning started um, when I was eight years old. Uh, my mom had bought a tour keyboard from the pawn shop. And I said, hey, what's that? And I started uh, tickling around on it. And next thing you know, I'm begging her to get me a, a keyboard that programs. I'm begging my dad to get me a laptop that, you know, has at the time it was called digital performer or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I can remember just having that passion of programming and producing um, when I was when I was around 13, 14. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm not going to take up the whole five minutes, I promise, I promise, but this is a good story. Uh, when I was around 14 years old, I had a, I had a boom box. So it had like a, a deck A and a deck B. Mm -hmm. And there was a way that I figured out how to connect my keyboard to a tape that goes into the deck one so I can record on deck two. And listen, that was some hot tech stuff right there, y'all. Like, Absolutely. that was Pro Tools before Pro Tools. You understand? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> multi tracking right. before multi tracking. Yeah. I was tracking before <laughs> multi tracks, man. Listen. And I remember, I remember staying in my room for like five hours, mm -hmm. just going from one song to the next because, you know, the keyboard I had was a Casio. So there was no storage on it. So after I finished the last song, I had to erase that one to start the other song and all that stuff. And I was hoping I got it on the tape and it was all this other stuff. But I remember that was that was when I noticed that, wow, I'm really passionate about this. If I can stick if I can stick around and do this for four or five hours, right. go out, you know, go out to the kitchen and get some get some dinner and come back and finish it. I said, this is this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Avery, what about you, man? Uh I think I've been in music as long as I really can remember. My dad was a drummer mm -hmm. in sort of like a little band that played around town yeah. and they would rehearse at my house. So as a baby, my mom would just kind of put me in the crib and sit me beside my dad. Right. <laughs> so I just heard music like the first time I heard it, that's some of the first sounds that I actually remember hearing. Yeah. So that led to me same as Chris, begging my dad, hey, you know, get me a, can I get a guitar? Can I get a drum set? Right. And so I kind of got into that, got into playing a little bit more, ended up playing in a little band with my cousin when I was about 10 or 11. 
and then took that on into middle school, you know, playing in the marching band and all that kind of stuff and senior going into uh, high school, playing in the jazz band, all that type of stuff. And, and then I ended up uh, going to college, continuing in music and then moved to Nashville. Met, a, met some great players over there, did a lot of stuff uh, over there, ended up on the uh, Bobby Jones show over there, did a lot of stuff. I uh, started work with BB and CeCe Winans. Then I got to Atlanta and I basically moved to Atlanta because I wanted to be a producer. I was around all these great musicians that kept telling me, you could be a producer. And I was like, what's that? And they were like, these are the guys that make the music. These are the guys that put the stuff together. And I would always do that in the band anyway. I was always the guy telling the guitar part, hey, man, are you sure that's right? Uh, I was telling the singer, hey, it sounds like that's the wrong harmony. Like, I think something's a little bit off. And then after a while, you just kind of figure out that maybe I should be the producer because I'm telling everybody what to do. And I'm kind of putting a song together. And and I had been doing like Chris, too. I had a, a reel to reel that I worked with where I would record stuff like that. I, I've probably recorded on every thing that you could record on. And I'm old, so I actually remember the beginning of Pro Tools when it first got started. So I got into that too. So that's how I kind of I got into it. And that's I just, cool. Man. Yeah, that's just, really cool, man. I, it's it's crazy how all producers kind of have that same story of how they got started because mine is similar to that as well. Let's move on to the next question, guys. Uh, how can young aspiring artists or producers succeed in the music industry? Let's let's uh, go with Avery first. Uh, how how can young uh, producers uh, or artists uh, succeed in the music industry? I mean, number one, you got to be good. You know, that's that's first things first. You got to make sure what you do is good. So stay up on your craft, continue to learn. But you know, you got to. I think too many guys spend too much time trying to get into camps and into situations that it's not their situation. You got to make your situation good. You know, when I met the artists that I met, they weren't big, weren't doing anything. I did a, a song for that rapper Bone Crusher called Never Scared. Bone Crusher was the cook at the restaurant where I played. And then somebody else introduced me to in the RE. So I, I helped her with her first couple of albums, just recording and playing bass and producing. And I think she worked at Chick-fil-A or something like that. Like you just, you know, take the people that are around you and and notice their talent. Don't worry about what they're doing. Just notice whether or not they're good. If they're good and you're good, it's going to open up doors. Right. It's about getting in there and, and grinding with that person, you know, uh, maybe somebody that's local and y'all just get in there and grind together and build together. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that answer. Um, it seemed like we lost Chris for a second. So let's just go ahead and move on to the next question. Um, can you explain the importance of having a mentor as an ex aspiring young producer? This, this is a great question right here, because I know there's a lot of people out there that just think you can just jump into this thing and you don't have anyone to mentor you. So let's speak to that, uh, Avery. Tell me about that. Uh, I think you need that because there's so much information now, but sometimes the information on the internet doesn't really pertain to you and what you're doing. So finding that person that knows the lane that you're getting ready to go into, they know what you need, the kind of musicians you need, the kind of singers you need, the kind of contract you need, the kind of investments you need, that's that's really what a mentor is now. You have to find that person that's in the lane that you're going into, which doesn't mean that you can't learn from everybody else. You can, but finding that person that can keep it specific to what you're doing, that's the best, that's the best mentor that you can have. It's, and I had some great people that helped me. I mean, too many to even mention now, but just great mentors who would sit down and find somebody that's going to be honest with you. That's going to tell you, Hey, that, that didn't sound good or you're not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes you just need somebody to tell you that you're not all that. You're not what you think you are. And this is how it really is. 
See that that's that's critical and key what you just said. I just came from another panel discussion here in Memphis, and I, I basically said the same thing. Like we have to be open to um, constructive criticism and be receptive of it, not just open, but be receptive. If somebody says, "Hey, man, this doesn't sound good," like it's never personal about the person; it's always about the record. So yeah, man, that that is great. Uh, that is great. And when Chris comes back in, man, I'm going to ask him the questions that that uh, that he missed, because I definitely want to get his take on them as well. Yeah. Um, let's go to the next one. Though, but when Chris comes in, we'll definitely get him back uh, in and get his uh, take on those questions. Basically, this one, man, this is something that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, what can be done academically to advocate for programs in our schools, especially in inner city communities for aspiring young producers and the current situations of budget cuts in music programs. Like this is crazy because I remember being in school and music was always something that you could partake in. But now with these budget cuts, man, like it's, it, you barely hear about these music programs other than just stuff like band that you can yeah. be in, you know, man, speak to that. Like, man, how do you it, to me, we have to complain. We have to complain the same way everybody else is complaining. You got to write your congressman. You got to complain to the school. You got to tell them. And you have to do it with passion and show them how much that it meant to you. You may not even be in, you may not be a musician. You might even didn't end up doing that. But just let them know how much of an impact it made on your life. Let them know how, look, I just had a, a class reunion in high school. And there was a lot of people that, you know, they didn't even know I stayed in music. They were like, I, I thought you got out of music. I'm like, no, I never left music. And those relationships last for a lifetime. Those lessons learned for a lifetime. There are certain things that you learn from music that you can't learn from anything else. You know, it's, it's art. And art is different from a lot of things. You just, the things that you learn from creating you don't learn from just having a job and I've had jobs, you know what I mean? And it's different. Like when you actually have to sit there and you have to create it, it uses a different part of your brain. It uses a different part of everything. And it teaches you how to work with people. It teaches you how to take criticism. It teaches you how to give criticism in an objective way and still be, you know, cool with everybody and figure out how to work together. And I think even if the companies could realize how important that is, you would have a better worker. You need that in the schools. You need kids learning how to work together. Absolutely. And it brings a different type of discipline that you learn, too. Absolutely. You know, especially if you're going to be good at this. You know, it's a different, totally different type of discipline than, you, you know, some normal jobs would require, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's an excellent answer, man. Um, our young people have access to social media to showcase their skills as producers. Man, that's hundreds of thousands of great people on social media doing production and stuff. How important is social media as a tool in the 21st century? Uh, I think it's a great tool because you can, you can pick up a lot of knowledge, you know, kind of like the question you asked me before. You just need a mentor to point you in the right direction because a lot of times social media is kind of like yelling fire in the theater. If there's no fire, it doesn't matter. And so sometimes you get caught up in just, man, I'm promoting, man, I, my IG, man, I'm popping. I got fire. I'm doing all of this stuff. Yeah, but your stuff ain't good. So it don't matter how much, it doesn't matter how many people you know. It doesn't matter how many videos you've watched. All of that doesn't matter. And it's easy to get caught up in that part of it instead of understanding that, look, when you hit that space bar on your computer or that when you start that drum machine, nobody cares about anything that you've done. They just care about whether or not it's good or not. And you need to figure that out. You need to spend some time asking questions plan it for other people and figure out, is it good? Absolutely. Hey, uh, Dr. Birdsong, you want to jump in and, uh, and um, uh, say something real quick? Uh, oh, um, you, 
um, unmute your mic, sir. There we go. Thank, uh, thank you so much, Sean, and thank you so much, Avery. Um, um, I'm asking everybody that's watching right now to please post your comments. Uh, this is the producer's discussion of the 2022 First Annual Mentors of Performing Arts of Broadcasters Virtual Conference uh, that we're doing on today. And the purpose of this discussion is how to, uh, aspiring young people in the African-American community to be the next generation of producers. And Chris uh, Adams, our other panelist, um, uh, we had lost him, uh, but he will be back on and uh, and he will be uh, asked those same questions. Our moderator will be addressing to him. So I'm going to uh, yield it back over to our moderator. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Um, so let's go to this this last question before we get Chris back on. But uh, let us reflect on college. How important uh, for our producers to attend college following high school to advance their skills? Should they attend college to obtain hands on experience? Tell me what you think about that. I have my own answer to that, but I'd like to hear what, what, what you think. Um, well, to me, college is knowledge. So. Knowledge, you can get knowledge anywhere. But what I like college for is that it's an experience and it's knowledge and it's connections. It's friendships that are going to last your whole life. I still have guys that I went to college with that I still work to this very day. So it's a great thing, but you need to understand that the business is a results oriented business. So Nobody cares where you went to college. You know, nobody cares about anything. They care about when they cut that song on, it better move them. You know, when they count that song off and you're playing as a musician with them, you better sound good. That's really what they care about. So understanding that you can get knowledge anywhere, it's whether you have the opportunity to go to college or not, that's the first thing. So your drive for knowledge and your thirst for knowledge is what's really important over everything. I had a teacher, I was getting ready to go to the Berkeley Music uh, a College. And you know, I wanted to go there because I thought, man, some great teachers there. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to learn um, at a college. And he basically told me that, let me tell you something, music is a path. And he said, if you're on the same path as the players that you like and you're doing a good job, he said, you're gonna meet them anyway. And I look back over my career and I've kind of worked with everybody I wanted to work with. And I've got friends that went to Berkeley and Full Sail and every college in the world, because at the end of the day, if you're good and you're on the path, you're basically all on the same street. So you need to understand what you need. You need to understand what will make your career go and you know, it's kind of like if me and some other guy was wanting to play basketball and I'm saying, hey, man, I want to go to this college. I want to be great at it. And I'm like, well, what's your name? And well, my name is LeBron James and I don't think I'm going to college. OK, well, that might work for you. That may not work for me. So the, you need to spend time knowing who you are. And if you don't know who you are, then. And you have the opportunity to go to college and figure it out. Don't feel bad. Just go and figure it out. But if you already know who you are, you already know you got connections, you have the knowledge, don't worry about college. You might not be that guy. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I definitely agree with everything you just said. Um, I think it's, it's, it's dual fold. Like you said, it's like some, it's colleges for some people, some people it's not, it all depends on the path you want to take or the connection that you already have. You know, there's some kids out there that are already killing it and connect it already. And, and they may say like, man, what's the need for college? But man, it's always better to have, I always say it's better to have more knowledge than what you need than to not have the knowledge at all. So, I mean, you know, um, that that's an excellent uh, answer to that question. Chris, welcome back, man. Glad you're back with us. I want to recap those questions and okay. give you an opportunity. Okay. To to um, respond as well. So I want to go back okay. to question number two. Uh, how can young artists, young artists, uh, young aspiring artists and producers succeed in the music industry? Uh, you know, 
I think I was listening to Mr. Avery, um, and I was I was jotting notes down, and then <laughs> and then my Wi-Fi cut out. <laughs> um, but from what I remember him saying is, continue to build your craft, continue to work that out. Um, I, I think for me, it's it's important to be more in love with the craft than be more in love with being successful. I think that's that's where we kind of muddy the water sometimes because we want a lifestyle or we want to become this next big artist, but just, just fall in love with the craft, fall in love with, you know, what you're doing. Um, and I think success will follow after that. I think it all works in congruency with each other. You know, the more you put your head down, the more you work on your craft, the more you study, the more you uh, get in rooms with like a Sean Keys or Avery Johnson, you get in those rooms and you pick their brains and you ask them, Hey, how did you do this? How did you start this? And just kind of listen to their story, uh, connect with that and, and, and build from there, you know? And also, and also, uh, you know, continue to, continue to be multifaceted. You know what I mean? Um, I started out as a piano player, but I had to learn how to program. You know, I started off in gospel, but I had to learn how to do R&B. I had to learn how to do trap. I had to learn how to do, you know, so there, was, there were different layers that I had to kind of go through as far as understanding, you know, understanding how to really get to where I wanted to go. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, can you explain the importance of having an, a mentor as an aspiring young producer? I, I feel like I can't explain that enough. Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, like mentorship for me, whether whether we talk on the phone, you know, whether you get a mentor that you have up close or a mentor from afar, I think it's so important. You know, they'll be able to um, guide you. They'll be able to tell you, hey, go left and you should go left. Sometimes they'll tell you go right, you go right. But I think you're able to, you're able to connect with someone who's been where you are. Um, they'll set you up a little bit more. Success. They'll be able to tell you the pitfalls you know, uh, the things to look out for and just kind of put you up on game. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm a church boy. So, you know, I've always heard the adage, uh, iron sharpens iron. So, of course, you you, you know, if, if you have someone yes, that's already doing what you're doing or where you're aspiring to go, that always makes for a better uh, situation because they can help you maybe go cross over some of those pitfalls that they had. Yes, sir. And man, that, yes, sir. Having, having uh, yeah, having somebody is is vital. Is vital. Let me move on yes, to this sir. next question. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. What can be done academically to advocate for programs in our schools, especially in inner city communities, for aspiring young producers? and the current situations of budget cuts in music programs. Now this is, man, it, this like has, makes me, I have a spur in my boot about this because we should have more of this. You know, I think, so, so the, your question is, you know, what can be done academically, you know, even with budget cuts. I mean, I think it's, I think it's important to, to allocate funds you know, um, allocate funds where they should go. Sometimes we get to the place, we get in a place where, or, or I'll just say for me, I'm a creative, we're all creatives in this room. This world wasn't designed for creatives, unfortunately. So, so it's creative arts. First thing I can block is like, you know, uh, we don't need music to express themselves. They need to go go to work and learn how to get a nine to five. And so which okay with that, I understand that, but you have to understand everybody's everybody's built differently. And especially for me, I was a creative, so it it was hard for me to express in any other form. Right? It was hard for me to express. Um so but I do think, you know, to answer your question uh more firmly, there's a lot of things that we need to 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 look into um, especially if you want to do this as a career. Um, I'm a big advocate in learning music theory. I'm a big advocate in learning just the simple uh, scales. It don't have to be, you know, the, the mixolydian scales or, you know, the, the advanced terminologies, but learn what's the difference between major and minor. 
You know, what is the C chord? What is the four of C? You know, what is the five of G G major? You know, so just just a couple of things like that. I think that would definitely help speak a musical language because I mean that's that's what musicians speak. You know, whether you're in a studio session, you know, learning how to learning how to chart, learning how to read a little. You know, just so those those kind of things. Hopefully, answered that question. I might have. I might have hit on a few, no, a few no, other you, topics there. You definitely did. I like because you 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 went you okay. kind of took a different angle than Avery did. I I, I love that. It, it, and, and you know, uh, I'll speak to a bit to that too because it you know it mentioned about inner city kids, and I know for a fact now in no way at all was I a horrible kid at all. But, uh, but I just know some of the stuff I could have gotten into had it not been for music. You know, my mom and dad never right. If, if right. they ever had to look for me, they know they could find me behind somebody's piano or somebody's organ in a church or somebody's drum yep. set. You know, yep. so I think yep. it's so critical to get these music programs back in these schools so that it gives kids, like you said, Chris, an outlet right. to do something other than some stuff they would get into that they, you know, they wouldn't have any business doing, man. So no, that's an excellent way of answering the question. Um I, so you know, and uh, I think me, I think to that point. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 go. You good. No, I go. think I think to that point you're exactly you're exactly right. If if we don't invest in them now, especially in the inner city, right? So I'm originally from New Jersey. Um, and so my, my folks moved us to North Carolina for a slower pace of life, for a different type of life. There's a lot to get into in Newark, a lot to get into in Irvington, a lot to get into in Orange, is which is where I'm from. You know what I mean? And I think my mom saw that and said, wait, you know what? Let's let's scale it back a little bit, let's let's whatever. But if I was still there and I hadn't gotten into music, I'd be, you know, God knows where I'd be. So so you're exactly right, especially in the inner city. And I think that's the first place to go because there's not a lot of funding as it is. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of funding as it would be with, um, you know, in, in a suburban area or in a majority predominantly white community. And I think that's that's the area that's that's where we're lacking you know, in, in understanding the principles or the importance of keeping that funding there. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, our young people, uh, this is another one about our young people. Our young people have access to social media to, so, to showcase their skills as producers. How important is social media as a tool in the 21st century? Uh, that's it. Me or Mr. Avery, you ready to that one? Yeah, that's you, Chris. Yeah. Again. So, so yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> social media is a new medium uh, that that has been around for the past 10, 15 years. I say, um, when I first started, social media was was nowhere to be found. Obviously, so it was it was a little tougher to get your music heard. Um, you had to know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody. Um, now I think everybody's connected. Everyone, you know. Uh, there's good there's good and bad to that everyone's connected um but then on the other side everyone feels that they're they're professional they're they're, they're you know whatever but i think it's important to utilize social media um just to be heard you know what i mean the the old avenues that we went through before as far as like sending in your demo tape to to uh to labels and radio stations i mean i could be wrong i don't know if we're doing that anymore you know what i mean so a great way to really connect with your audience um, is through social media promotions. You know, we have streaming services that it's pretty easy to get up there now, you know? So, so yeah, just use it for your advantage. Yeah. You, you're right about that, bro. It's like um, social media is really driving the industry. now. Uh, we know oh, yeah. about this. Absolutely. Not, no, it's like the first thing, especially as independent artists, the first thing, if any label, wants to uh engage with you the first thing they're doing is they're going to your instagram page or they're going, going to your to facebook it. page they're yep. trying to see what your following yep. is yep. why do i need to sign you does anybody yep. care that you're doing mm -hmm. anything out here music so that's the first thing. so social yep. media is like one of the biggest things right now and i mean you know it's ever changing the music industry or oh, the world is ever changing and so and like, you know, i'm older so yep. I've, I've seen all of those changes happen but it really used to be the same thing when radio was running everything. It was the same thing. They just sent mm, a okay. car, and a car came into the city and said, who's hot? Who's on radio? Who's who's the up-and-coming mm. person? So it just moved into another thing. 
But it's really the same thing. It's still about the guys that are hustling and making their stuff go. You just got another two. It's like you got a hammer instead of a screwdriver, but it's still the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That sounds like yeah. that sounds like the old adage, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Stay the same. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so the so the last question I have, Chris, uh, let's reflect on college here for a second, right? How important uh, okay. for it for our producers to and uh, young producers to attend college following high school to invest their skills? Uh, should they attend college to obtain hands-on experience? What do you What is your take on that? It, you know it. My personal opinion to that is please attend college, please. That is something that no one can ever take from you. No one, can, they can take your money, they can repossess your car, they can come take your television, but that college to be because that's something you've earned. And I think learning, learning practice, you know, you know, I... Chris, seems like you've gotten into a bit of a matrix there. Okay, maybe move around a little bit. Maybe we can get a little bit better uh, signal from you. How's this now? Is it good? Yeah, there we go. I'm not good. The more you're able to put it in the field, able to kind of apply what you learned in the classroom setting. And always, and what you've learned having that hands-on setting. I mean, having that hands-on experience in the, um, you know, and when you when you get in the field. So yes, I'm a huge advocate for college. I have two degrees. Um, I, I don't, I, you know, I'll never say it's the end all be all, but I will say, you know, being educated that's one of the that's one of the greatest one of the greatest tools that you can ever have in your life. Man, um, this man, this has been this has been incredible, man. Like I can go on all day talking about this because I I love what we do, man. It's been a pleasure to meet you two guys, uh, and absolutely, I'm gonna connect with y'all on social media, man. And uh, I just please, wanna, please, yes, yeah. I just want to thank uh, BABA uh, Association for for doing this, man, and and Dr. Birdsong, thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to come on here and, and just share about, you know, uh, what we love to do and encourage our youth uh, to do this. I mean, cause you know, you know, of course, although we feel like we probably can do this forever. I told my wife the other day, like, you, you know what, not maybe not the other day, but I, I feel like, you know, I'm gonna be like Quincy. I wanna be producing in my seventies and, and stuff like that. That's you know? right, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but but that's we do right. have to have to show, you know, our, our uh, young folk, you know, the way to do it, you know, the, the right way, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and just explain to them what the true, uh, you know, sense of being a producer is, you know, it's so much more than just being uh, um, a beat maker, you know, uh, you know, producer in its own right is somebody that steers the entire record from giddy up to woke. I always like to say it like that, you know, like that's the person that's in charge of, let's teach these kids how, hey, how do you manage a budget for a record? Like, you know, who's the right, you know, uh, musicians to hire for this particular record? Like, you know, just because your homie plays bass or your, your, your boy plays drums at your church don't mean they the right guy for this particular record. Right. You know what I'm saying? You need to have the right the group of musicians together, the right Absolutely. background singers for the record, you know, so that it matters Absolutely. what you're doing, you know. It's so many other other facets to being a producer than just sitting down with an MPC, which I still own. I still use an MPC. Uh, I'm, I'm oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's just something yes, about sir. an MPC that the drums just <laughs> jump out of the speakers, man. You know, so but you know, it's more than just sitting down in front of, of you know with some VSTs and 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 making a beat. You know, it is so much more than to it than, than just that, man. You know, it seems that like we got a little bit more time, so they, they want me to keep talking, so I can definitely do that. Uh, you know, so uh, man, I mean, you know, like that's another thing that I think 
I, I want to ask you guys to speak to real quick. Like, like, what do our young people need to know about what it really means to be a producer as opposed to being just a beat, beat maker? Avery, let's start with you, man. I know this wasn't in the list of questions, but I know you could probably speak to this as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, we do have a lot of beat makers, so I, I don't want to. It's just another job. It's another job to be a producer than to be a beat maker. A beat maker will make the beat send out a whole pack of beats and then the artist just picks out the beat they like they record to it end of story producer that's not the same like the producer is the guy that comes in and says no i'm going to it's kind of like going to get a suit being made for you as opposed to just picking something off the rack you might pick something off the rack that looks good on you but if that guy is actually making the suit tailored for your body tailored for your armlet everything is tailored to you then it's different. That's kind of what a producer does. A producer goes, no, we need these background singers. Like you said, we need these musicians. Or I don't think you do good in that style. I don't think you do good with those harmonies. I think we need to do this. So the producer handles a lot of just all kind of responsibilities. And it's important to know what your role is, whatever you're doing. If you're just a musician, then shut up and be the musician. If you're the producer, shut up and be the producer. I think now the lines are getting kind of blurred a little bit, but you still got to understand what it is. Like everybody has to know their role. Everybody has to work together. Everybody has to do what they're good at and just get it done. And I tell people all the time, it's not hard to make money anywhere. It's not hard to make money in the music business. It's hard to make money with the people you want to make money with and doing something that you want to do. So you need to concentrate on that. Find the people that you like to work with. Find something that you like to do. And if you're going to produce, pay attention to the people that are around you and pay attention to the artists that you want to work with and who they work with and, and find all of that stuff out first because that's a big part of it. I know guys making tons of money that are not happy. I know people that are making no money that are the happiest in the world. So you need to figure that out. That's what a producer's life can be the greatest life in the world. As long as you pay attention to who you're producing and who you're working with, it's great. Absolutely. Because Chris can tell you when it ain't, it ain't. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, I want to encourage all of our participants that's watching as well. Um, please share this on your pages. And if you have any questions, be be uh don't don't be shy. Please post them um uh, in the comments. We'll we'll try to make sure we try to get to them if we can. And uh we can get uh Avery or Chris or even myself to answer them. Uh so if anybody has any comments and you want to uh post your questions. Please feel free to do so. Please feel free to do so. Um, Chris, same thing, man, with you. Um, is there anything else you want to add to what Avery was saying about just the, what young people, you know, aspiring producers need to know about what is yeah. the difference between just, you know, being a producer and just, you know, because there's, there's so many facets. There's composing. There's producing. You absolutely. Know, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I think Avery, like, he, I don't know if y'all saw me. I was trying to turn off my camera, but I was getting ready to run around the park real quick because he was just stepping on so many. I'm telling you, I said, Avery, you are the GOAT at this moment. Yes. Like, he's exactly right. He's, ex <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're exactly right. Um, producers have budgets. Beat makers, they have Fruity Loops. I mean, you know, so there's there's a lot of, there's a difference, it, it, you know, in the same fashion, you know, some artists, and they say, oh yeah, I got the key at the church to produce my record. I said, you did? So what made you feel like he was a good producer versus being just a really good keyboard player? They're not the same, wow. you know what I mean? Um, I think beat makers, like you said, make the beats. They, uh, and no disrespect to them, I know some incredible beat makers, you know, a lot work for me, it's wonderful. Um, 
they, you know, they lay out the beats, hey, pick one, boom, there's your song. Producers, they actually sit with it from conception to completion. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So so we're talk we're talking at the top of it. We're trying to put the right players in place. We're trying to make sure the right studio fits, you know, the budgets are good. And then we see it all the way to mix and master in all that stuff. And so I feel like that's the big disconnect with when people don't understand the role, the role d- descriptions rather. You know, they, they want a beat maker to act as a producer, but they don't have the skill level or capacity to operate at that level. And then oh, there are producers who don't make beats. You know what I'm saying? Like it, mm-hmm. I think they've been interchangeable for so long. It's like, you know, you have to make sure that you understand, you know, you, of course, you know, they, they I, I feel like for me, producers are kind of like project managers, you know, you they kind of do a lot of hand holding from the top to the bottom to make sure it's, it's all, you know, it's all done. And so I think that's the major, major difference uh, between producers and beat makers and arrangers. And like you said, composers, I mean, that's a totally different category within itself. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the, the difference for me. Yeah, there's different roles, right? And all of this, you know, different and I roles, think yep. that, like you said, yep. Chris, it, people get them intertwined and get them confused a lot. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I, I've, I've had several conversations with young, young cats. That's like, yeah, man, I I, I produce uh, this record. And it's like, OK, well, you know, tell me about it. Well, yeah, I made the beat. Like, OK, no. But like, were you for overseeing the entire <laughs> Did from, you produce it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you, so mm-hmm. you, you know, you made sure it, it got mixed and mastered. You handled the budget. You picked the studio. You brought mm-hmm. the artist in. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like you did mm-hmm. open production. Told that person, you know, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, man, it's crazy because you know, um, a lot of people don't understand the different roles, and that, and and that, that's why right. we gotta be so. Uh, um, um, how do I want to say? I'm looking for the the right term. We gotta be so. Um, energetic and passionate about teaching the younger generation you know the business of how this thing really works um because the worst thing is to set these kids up to go into these larger rooms and they sound ignorant not not in a derogatory way but just unlearned about what these roles really are just yeah just just don't know Mm -hmm. yeah you know just don't Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. you know and, and they'll be saying one thing and you know have these opportunities that could probably pass them by just because they're they're unlearned the one thing i've always um lived by is that always be prepared for a situation before you walk into a situation uh you know so it's like you don't ever want to get yourself caught in something you know and you're not prepared for it so that means from not only the music aspect of things and being a creative, but the business aspect of things and how things work. What's yes, the sir. terminology like? Yes, sir. What does this really mean? You know, what is what is music publishing? When am I entitled to that? Like, what I meant to say that too because I had mentors in music publishing, so mm-hmm. they even before I had my first song that was cut, I kind of already knew what publishing was. Like, I understand how it worked. They taught me every part of that. I had some guys in Nashville that taught me, you know, they went all the way back to working with Elvis Presley and those guys. So they told me what music publishing was. And you need, sometimes you just need a mentor in business because the, you know, the word business, that's longer than the word music. So you need to figure that out too. Like you need hey, a- I love that, bro. I'm gonna use that. The word business yes. is, is longer than, music. than the it word is. music. Oh, that's tweetable, yeah, man. Yeah. Somebody ought to tweet that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, I never forgot. I was like, "Yeah, you're right. You you need to you need to own your stuff, and you need to know what's yours and what's fair, and understand that." Some people think, "Oh, man, you know, I work with a lot of younger guys, and they'll say, well, you know, are they ripping me off with this deal?'" And I say, "Well, that that's all up to you. That's are they ripping me yeah. off, or they're not? Do you need?" Do you need to do this? Is this going to help your career? Only you know that. But what you don't need to do is go into the situation thinking that they got your best interests at heart. They don't. They will. If you go in there and you don't know what it is, they will take as much money 
as they can. I tell people when you come into the music business, if you go to buy a Toyota and they sell it to you for a Rolls Royce price, that's the music business. There it is. There it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And all of these things are relative, man. I tell people like, I, I you know, I do con consults uh, every now and again with artists that I've worked with or even artists that are, you know, aspiring. And, um, you know, they ask me about different things like that when it comes to splits and we're writing music and things like that. And well, what do you think? I'm like, it's what you guys agree upon. It's exactly. it, it it's never black and white, you know. It's never exactly. like oh, it's got to be this much and this. No, it's man, it's whatever you guys agree upon. You guys need to sit and and it's crazy how it always yep. happens yep. that yep. people don't take the time to handle the business first before or, or 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 at the proper time when working on a record, and then you get all of these challenges later on. Um, but yep. man, if yep. you just sit down in a room and talk to each other about, Hey, what do you think is fair? Hey, okay. We disagree. All right, let's hammer this out. Let's work this out until we get it. It's no black and white. It's what you agree upon, man. Well, and don't just start the meet. Don't start the meeting and the music, just talking about the business. Right. A lot of times, if you know the business, I've had hits mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. I just went in and act like I didn't know the business, let the record get real big, let it do a thing. And then they're like, okay, now that we're ready to handle the business. And now you've got more power. Now you can say, oh, okay, so you want to take it off the radio? You want to take all the momentum that is going right now? Okay, yep. you do. Absolutely. They won't do that. They will pay right. you your money. They'll make it right mm -hmm. because you know what they have invested. So sometimes I meet younger artists that come in and they want to talk about the business off top. I'm like, no, you don't need to talk about it off top. You just need to know it. So when it comes time to talk about it, yeah, you yep. know what's fair for you. Yep. You know how the business works. And that's right. you know what that's you right. want to get. And now that's you've right. got more leverage because you've created this great work. Yep. Nobody wants to run and away big, from yep. it. The artists love it. The record label loves it. Everybody loves it. Okay, now it's Everybody, time. To yep, talk yep, about yep, it. yep. 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 Absolutely. Yep. I agree. Yep. I agree. Guys, I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you guys, man. This has been a pleasure. Thank you again, Dr. Birdsong, for um, um, allowing us this opportunity to just share um, from our experiences uh, as music producers, uh, you know, uh, experiences in the industry. Uh, thank you, Avery, so much. Thank you, Chris, uh, for being a part of this, man. Hopefully, today you know we matched our goal or we we hit our goal to actually inspire the youth in 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 this upcoming generation uh uh you know to do music and be educated uh on what it is to actually be a producer and work in this industry man um i think it's vital i think it's critical that we grab uh these young talented up and coming producers and just show them the way uh because after all you guys music is so important um if you think about it when you get on an elevator what do you hear music when you get in your car you turn on the radio it's music i mean it's all around us music all over it's 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 yeah. all around us man yeah so so it's very vital uh yeah. for us to to uh you know kind of cultivate this next generation but again dr birdsong uh i'm gonna turn it over to you but i i want to just thank you for the opportunity to moderate this chris and avery thank you guys so much for being a part of this and all of the listeners out there thank and the viewers out thank here so much, thank you all man. so much for tuning in dr birdsong it's in your hands now sir. thank you thank you it's in you can everybody hear me yeah yes sir Okay, thank you so much. Um, um, on behalf of the administration, the board members of Birdsong Association of Broadcasting the Arts, uh, incorporated known as BABA, I would like to personally like to thank our moderator, Sean Keys, and our two distinguished panelists, Avery Johnson and Chris Adams, for taking their time out of the schedules to, to share their information and experience today as producers in this, in this formative discussion. Um, please join us uh, for another informative discussion. We're going to have uh, three more today. Uh, please join us for record labels and distribution from 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which will be moderated by Troy Edwards, 
uh, as moderator, and the panelists will be uh, Stella Award-winning hip-hop Christian rap artist MC Nice and Talene Harris, the former lead singer of Atlantis Star. Then from 6 to 7 p.m., we will have radio broadcasting, moderated by Rhonda Supreme, and the panelists will be Stanshaw Cornelius, Mashiba Webb, and Larry Young. And then from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it will be television broadcasting, moderated by Justin Burst, and the panelists will be Jennifer Eichenberger and Nikki Rich, uh, an award-winning television personality and a uh, basketball for the Oprah Winfrey Network. So um, to learn more about our organization, please visit us at www.babaonline.org. That's www.babaonline.org. And again, we would like to thank everybody for, for joining us on today for this a great discussion for producers for the 2022 first annual Mentors of Performing Arts and Broadcasters Virtual Conference. And I'm asking everybody that is watching right now to please uh, post your comments. Please post your comments. And at this time, um, uh, I'm going to allow our two panelists to give their closing remarks. Starting with you, Avery. And then follow by Chris. Hey, I just want to say thank you for inviting me. And uh, it was wonderful, man. It was easy. And I just hope something that I said will help somebody, man, because um, I had some good people that looked out for me when I was in it. And for Dr. Birdsong to do this, you guys don't know, man, it's, the, it's a big opportunity to have guys talk to you and to cover that many bases. You know, I was just telling Chris, I was telling uh, Sean, I, I actually... There's a couple of conferences that I would like to learn more about, so I'm going to be watching. So take advantage of it. Thank, thank, uh, uh, thank you so much, Avery uh, and Chris. You have your closing uh, comments. Absolutely. Well, listen, Dr. Burson, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I love doing stuff like this because I, I wish I had someone with for me situation. Um, I think I brought on amazing musicians and amazing business. So I think if I had learned early on, like when I was in Egypt, I would have avoided a lot of pitfalls, I would have avoided a lot of different situations. Um, so conferences like these, I mean, take take out your pen, your notepad, you know, and get and get ready to learn, get ready to be educated because you know, especially for people like Avery Johnson who've been in the business 30 years, like, you know, you don't have the opportunity to um, with an OD. People like Sean, just, just listen to them and continue to learn. But one thing I'll tell you, this is what I've, you know, this is what a professor of mine told me when I was in college. He said, um, if you stop growing, you're dying. If you're not growing, you're dying. And I, listen that I, i'm gonna get a tattoo of that one day um and ask god for forgiveness you know just just because i want that to be, I want it to be welded on my heart and always look at it and say i gotta keep growing i gotta be in spaces that you know that will challenge my thinking number one but will also kind of give me the tools that i need to continue to go forward so i think this this right here this is one of those spaces Thank, thank, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much, Avery. And, and again, thank you, uh, Sean, for moderating for the discussion. Again, um, this is the uh, conclusion of the two uh, of the producers' discussion of the 2022 first annual Mentors of Performing Arts and Broadcasting Virtual Conference presented by Birdsong Association of Broadcasting and Arts, where Alma Mato is prepare, preparing today's youth as voices in arts and broadcasting. Please post comments to learn more about our organization. Again, our official website is www.babaonline.org. That's www.babaonline.org. On behalf of our secretary and treasurer, which is the administration, and our board members of this organization, thank you all so much for tuning on today. Please come back to join us for our next three discussions, which will be live streamed here. And next week, uh, we will we will do the final discussion. So visit our website and go to Mentors Conference, and you'll see the uh, the schedule for the entire conference. So we're about to close for now. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna talk to our to our uh, panelists and moderators for a few minutes. God bless you, and remember, preparing today's youth as voices in arts and broadcasting. Please post your comments. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, and please join us for our next discussions on today. Thank you so much. 
have a good day. Bye-bye for now.